Starting at a forward, wearing number 33, a 6'7 freshman, Russell Todd. Starting at a forward, wearing number 68, or 624, a 6'8 junior, Greg Nance. Starting at center, wearing number 53, a 6'9 sophomore, Phil Collins. Starting at guards, wearing number 21, a 6'2 senior, co-captain Joe Frizz. And at the other guard, wearing number 11, 6'1 senior, co-captain Lowe Moore. And greet the rest of the Mountaineers and a coaching staff. Well, this is one of those old, old rivalries. It began back in 1906. The Mountaineers hold a 72 to 60 edge in ball games. We almost, Jay, had one official to work the game. Phil Davidson was here in plenty of time. Tom Adams had not shown up. There were some hasty phone calls made, and we do have both officials here. Let's take a look at the matchups one more time as we get ready for play. Well, up front, Woody, uh, Russell Todd and uh, Sammy also go each other. Sammy Alts, experienced ball player. Russell Todd, on the other hand, a freshman just starting to come into his own. Nance and McMillan. Nance, West Virginia's most consistent ball player. McMillan playing real well for Pitt. Collins and Clancy we talked about in the middle. Clancy's a five-star general. He'll take the ball club with him every place he goes. Fritz and Neverson, two different types of players. And also Lowe's Moore in a little bit of a slump. Dave Allinger, an excellent shooter. Okay, the young man you saw in the bib overalls a moment ago is not playing here today. That's Junior Taylor, a former Mountaineer, and he is here early to spark this crowd this afternoon. Well, he was in there real early, Woody, and of course, uh, he's, as you mentioned, he's getting the people fired up here. Should be a good one. Okay, Sam Clancy moves into the center circle, number 15. For the Pitt Panthers, West Virginia will send Greg Nance in. The official gesturing in the center circle is Tom Adams. Bill Davidson is his running mate this afternoon. Teams with opposite records in the Eastern Eight, Pitt number two at four and one, West Virginia number seven at one and four, and the Panthers own the opening tip-off. That's Carlton Neverson, 24, against Lowe's Moore. Down into the corner it goes to Ellis. And back outside, Ellis, top of the key against Nance now, gets the shot away, and a foul called on Greg Nance. A lot this of was something that hurt Nance in the ball game last time out VPI. There were three quick personals. He's got the first one here today. Right, he, of course, he's drawing a tough assignment, Woody. That time, the move across the circle, Pitts moving from uh, using the court real well, taking advantage of it, passing the ball real well. That time, uh, of course, Ellis, a lanky ball player, slid in off the middle, and he really got the area where he needed to be and drew the foul. You know, Catlett told us that he was going to use some good, tight matchup man-to-man -man, and a lot of full-court pressure this afternoon to see if he can rattle the Panthers. Pitt is on top 1-0 with the game's first point. Here's Sammy Ellis with another try. That's Nance with the rebound, but it's knocked away from him, and Olinger comes out with the ball. Again, Carlton Neverson takes Moore to the right side, loses control of the ball. Don't know whether that was a, uh, a very soft block or whether Neverson just lost control. Clancy underneath, big, strong fella. Well, that time, Bill Collins gambled. He swung out around the outside, an excellent pass to the inside of Clancy. Once he gets it in that okay. tight, what he's awful tough to stop. West Virginia's first offensive thrust. That's Russell Todd, the freshman from North Fork. And the Panthers, too, are in a man-to-man -man defense at the outset. Lob pass under to Nance. His shot won't go, and Pitt comes down with a rebound. Lenny McMillan comes up with it. Down quickly to Olinger. Inside of McMillan. Had somebody had a hand on the ball. Here's Clancy, and he walks to the ball. Maybe one pass too many, but they're getting down to Pitt that time real well on transition. They're not putting the basketball on the floor. The Mountaineers got back real quick that time also. I like the way both clubs are opening up. Woody. They're opening up aggressively, and we're going to see a good basketball game. Okay, here's Pitt in the backcourt with a lot of pressure. Broken by Lowe's Moore on the dribble. Joe Frizz back to Moore. Frizz will not have a lot of time for that set shot of his today. Here's Collins underneath. Capped up no good and rejected back outside. Pitt comes up with the ball. 
Lenny McMillan's shot is no good. The return is up, no good. Intended by Ellis, but another foul call. Well, that time off the transition, Woody, uh, Pitt goes to the boards, the offensive boards, very aggressively as we take a look at Gil Catlett on your left. Bobby Doe Smith, the assistant coach, just backing out of the picture. Gail Catlett not entirely happy with what he's seeing right now. Again, Ellis goes to the line. Shot is no good. Pitt leading here, three to nothing. We're very early in the ball game, 18-20 remaining in the first half and a lot at stake for both ball clubs here today. One of two. Panthers are two for four at the line. Moore's pass is intercepted by Clancy and West Virginia having a bit of difficulty getting anything generated early. Well they are. They'll have to play tough defense to get themselves going offensively. Inside it's going to be very tough. There's a bad pass but it falls back into uh, Pitt's hand. It's Clancy, and he feeds off and into Olinger. The ball is loose, and the Panthers again for the second time today save the loose basketball. Clancy. Back to Neverson, and walking call. Panther turnover. West Virginia still not on the board, trailing 4 nothing. Let's see what happens this time down. Pitts uh, pressuring in the backcourt. They use several different types of pressure. You can see Tim Curry change defenses. Uh, during the course of the game, as also uh, will Gail Catlin. We can hear Tim Gergerich to our left hollering overplay, overplay. There's Lowe's Moore. Well, you get Lowe's into a type of running game, that's his game. It's very important, Woody, that Lowe's get off to a good start, as I mentioned, beginning the telecast. Foul call against Moore coming up floor. Contact with the body. You didn't see him, but you heard Tom Adams, the official, I'm sure, make the call. Very demonstrative. Well, both officials, Woody, are well of how important this ball game is in, what rivalry it is here, and they're right on top of these calls. Mountaineers with three personal fouls, team fouls. Pitt, zero so far. Here's Clancy against Collins. The shot won't go. He puts it back again. Still slapping around a volleyball game. Russell Todd comes out with it. And a holding call underneath against Pitt. Well, Pitt uh, got four opportunities that time. The Mountaineers were positioned inside Woody, but a little bit too close to the basket. And uh, they came down with it. That foul was on Dave Ollinger, number 22. Four to two the score. West Virginia down by two very early in the ball game. We haven't played three minutes quite yet. Joe Frizz, senior from Coriopolis, Pennsylvania. Frizz against Ollinger. This is Russell Todd, and a pass is batted away outside, but we've got a call away from the ball underneath. It's on Phil Collins of West Virginia. Really, Woody, that's a break for the Mountaineers because that was going to be two points down at the other end. Uh, excellent steal as Neverson jumped into the passing lane, was headed for a layup. Collins comes out of the game number 32. Donnie Gibson comes in to replace him. And you watch Gibson and Clancy. They played against one another in high school, and Gibson's been talking about this ball game for many, many weeks. Well, I'm sure he's fired up. Dave Olinger on the baseline, rejected by Nance. And here's Joe Frizz on the run to Moore. His shot rejected, but we had interference with the basket. That time of goaltending, the pass from Joe Frizz coming down on the break. Uh, Lowe's Moore was a little close to the hoop, Woody, that time, and uh, West Virginia comes up with a uh, goaltending on pit, which uh, is a good situation for the Mountaineers that time. Credit Lowe's Moore with the two points. He's got all four for West Virginia. We're tied at four apiece. Nice shot from the outside by Sammy Ellis. Well, Sammy Ellis is a good 18 to 20 foot shooter, and uh, Mountaineers were a little late picking him up, and uh, you can't do that. Here's Joe Frizz in the baseline. It won't fall for him. Ellis sky high for the rebound. Gets it out to Neverson. And the Panthers are on the attack again. Olinger from downtown. He's out on the arm by number 21, Joe Frizz of West Virginia. His second foul. We've got a break in the action. A timeout on the floor at the Coliseum here in Morgantown with a score. The Pitt Panthers six. The West Virginia Mountaineers four. Hey, more than ever, 
You need someone you can count on. Coal, the nation's answer to our energy problems, is a complex industry. So complex, it requires specialists in every phase of operations. Specialists in coal production to specialists in insurance protection. Flat Top Insurance Agency offers the coal industry more coal insurance expertise than anyone else in the business. It's Flat Top Insurance for your security. There's only one Z-Bart. And no one else, including your new car dealer, can match the exclusive Z-Bart rust-proofing system. And now the United States Auto Club has granted the Z-Bart system its seal of approval, indicating proven excellence in the rust-proofing field. Ask your Z-Bart dealer about the 10 reasons that make Z-Bart number one with USAC. Z-Bart, it's us or rust. Your local Z-Bart dealer is located at 275 National Road, Tridelphia. Lots of basketball action coming up here at the Coliseum. Of course, West Virginia with five of their remaining eight ball games, Eastern eight games. As we pointed out, a good opportunity to make some hay early or late if you might uh, want to look at it that way. But also, March 19th through the 22nd will be a big, big time as the West Virginia State Boys Basketball re Tournament returns to this floor. Tickets are now available through the WVU Coliseum ticket office. $7 per session or $20 for all seven sessions. So get in touch with the ticket manager at the WVU Coliseum about your high school tickets and Eastern eight tickets will be going on sale on Wednesday. We'll tell you more about that just a little bit later. Back to action. Dave Allinger at the foul line with a chance to put the Panthers up by three and he does it. It's seven to four. You know Woody, uh, Pitt has a mismatch going for him. Ner uh, Neverson in one of the guard spots uh, has Lowe's more on, uh, on him and of course there's a, a great size uh, differential there. Of course, now we have Greg Jones in the ball game, uh, placing Joe Frizz. Both teams shooting 40% from the floor here early on. Beautiful feed. Gibson can't get the put shot in. He's got it now. Well, those more set that up, Woody. Great penetration, keeping the ball low to the floor, split the defense, got down inside and dished off beautifully. I think Lowe's is really into this basketball game early. Okay, it's eight to six. Underneath they go, and the shot, no shot at all as the ball was lost. Here's the feed to Nance. Good fake. That time on the drive down the floor. Great transition that time, getting great Nance open. He took the fake, laid it back up. Well, the game's second tie. This one comes at eight. We've got 15, 20 to go in the first half. Shot is no good. Gibson gets up for the ball. Russell Todd and the Mountaineers on the attack. Lowe's Moore to Nance. Tries to go inside. Has the ball batted away. Let's see who owns it. It'll be Pitt basketball. Well, this Pitt club is very quick. They use their hands real well. They take advantage of what talent they have. However, the Mountaineers are working very hard at both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively, and they're right now they're getting the shots they need to take. Okay, the Panthers with Ellis. Now Olinger. Olinger loses the ball, and walking is called. It looked like Lowe's Moore might have gotten him on the arm, and I held my breath. What with Moore? Already with a personal foul in the ball game. West Virginia's Greg Jones will toss it in, number 12. Eight to eight to score of the ball game. It's been a beauty so far. Now Pitt has a different, they're showing you something different this time down. They're falling back into a zone, which amounts to a 2-3 zone. Uh, right off, Woody, the Mountaineers are probably, they they recognized it real well. You'll see him go baseline and look into the middle. That's where the opening is. Intercepted. Lenny McMillan comes out to Carlton Neverson. Back to McMillan, and Ellis loses it out of bounds. One of those cases of running with the ball before you get it. Phil Collins comes back into the ball game for West Virginia, replacing Greg Nance. And there's the backcourt duo. Greg Jones, the freshman from Youngstown. And number 11, Lowe's Moore, the senior from Mount Vernon, New York. Collins on the high post, goes to the board, double clutches, it won't fall. And Pitt comes down with a rebound. Clancy, very strong underneath. Well, I think uh, Bill realized how. Uh, Here's an interception. 
by Jones. Let's see if he can do it. He's got it. Excellent move that time by Craig Jones, setting up the steal, taking it down. He can hang in the air for a long time, up and over the rim. That's the first Mountaineer lead of the afternoon, 10-8 to eight the score. McMillan, it won't fall. Tough luck shot. That one was down in the well and came out. Here's Lowe's Moore. It's becoming very physical out there. Pass under to Russell Todd, off his hands and out of bounds. And the Mountaineers will come on with another guard. 23, Diego McCoy checks in, replacing Lowe's Moore. Well, I feel Cal Catlett uh, really wanted to, right now they have pit in a transition game, Woody, which they want. They're pushing up down the floor real well. I think Gail Catlett replaced Lowe's Moore because he got a little fancy in the backcourt. Wanted that ball down the floor a little bit quicker. Okay, Sammy Ellis gives way to Neverson. His ball is knocked away from him by McCoy. McCoy is tripped, goes down to Todd. The shot is no good, but a foul call. Right now, West Virginia is winning the battle of transition games, Woody. They're getting the ball out very quick, and that's because they are getting, they're playing good team defense on the defensive end of the court. We're going to see it come up on replay. Probably see the steal. Here coming in is Russell Todd. He takes a look, sees where the man is up and over, and the foul is drawn. But there's Russell, who's already back in and has the rebound off the missed shot. Good hustle. Neverson charged with the personal. His first foul. That's only the second team foul against Pitt. Here's Russell Todd at the foul line. <laughs> Youngster has had a great deal of adversity during the season. Had a preseason injury that kept him out for a good long while. He was subpar. His father passed away. The man has had one uh, trauma after another. But he's looking forward to be a great star for the Mountaineers. I'll tell you, Woody, I think down the key in the last uh, eight ball games, uh, Russell Todd's going to be a real plus for the Mountaineer squad going into tournament play. Clancy's shot is rejected. Here's Greg Jones. Collins with a rebound and a foul call. That time down the floor, Greg Jones took the penetration to the hoop, but the Mountaineers are getting back down the floor on the transition. And not seeing the first shot come up. The Mountaineers are winning. There's Greg Jones with a penetration up and over with the right hand. The ball lays up there. Two or three Mountaineers inside. Collins gets it. Goes, gets the head fake up and draws the foul. And the foul's on number 15, Sam Lacey. Bill Collins, Lacey, sophomore me. from Palos Heights, Illinois. Comes to us by way of Dodge City Junior College in Kansas. Makes it 13 to 8, West Virginia. He's got another shot coming. You know, Woody, I think this uh, kid is going to be a good player for the Mountaineers. I think the people are going to have to be patient. Excellent 15-foot shooter. He's close to the hoop, but he's back to the basket because it's really difficult. Well, he almost got himself a steal on the far side of the floor. And the crowd delighted in the efforts for the Mountaineers this afternoon. That's Johnny Ryan, 32, new into the ball game for Pitt. Into the corner to Ellis. Ellis trying to move on Collins. Finally puts it up. There's a lot of contact. And a foul called on Collins. Well, that time when he wasn't so much poor defense on the part of uh, Collins as a smart offensive play by Clancy. He got the fake, got calls to the baseline, and then drew the foul by laying his body into Collins, and that threw the foul. Well, as you can tell, the crowd here at the Coliseum in Morgantown does not approve of that call. 12.31 to go first half. We've got a break in the action. The score, West Virginia 14, hit 8. Elbow parts are a must for your car, truck, or bus. Name brands you can trust. Parts, bus. We know just how it feels. It could Little would anyone know looking in right now that we've got an eight and 10 team leading by six points over a 14 and five ball club. That rivalry can do strange things. Well, and I think the crowd got right into this ball game right away too, Woody, and that certainly helped the Mountaineers. You'd have to give it a plus uh, to the crowd for responding right away and uh, bringing this club a lot. The Mountaineers, uh, I think, have, have gone uh, through the first eight minutes of transition game as well as I've seen them all year. I think they're getting the ball out. They're looking down the floor. 
and plus all five of the people are into the offense. It's very important. Want to remind our viewers too, if you watch 23 and 12, those are the young men who are said to be heir apparent to the uh, guard positions next year for Gail Catlin. Here's Sammy Ellis, and Ellis is now one for three at the foul line this afternoon. West Virginia shooting 55% from the floor. Pitt, 22%. Not doing very well at all. Ellis makes the second. And it's 14-9. That's Greg Jones out front. Well, Di Diego McCoy with the ball now. A lot of youngsters, three freshmen have touched it this time down. They have Woody, and there's a lot of movement out there by uh, the Mountaineers, and that's good to see. I think they're passing the ball, they're keeping it off the floor, not holding it for a long period of time, and uh, the chase pit out of that zone defense. They're back in the man as Diego McCoy hits from the top of the key. Well, the freshman from Washington, D.C. gets his first two, and Jones overplays Ryan and picks up the personal. That's the seventh team foul. Well, they show six on the scoreboard, now seven. And we'll go to the other end of the floor. John Ryan with his opportunity at his first points of the afternoon. Ryan, a 6-2 freshman from Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania. Excuse me, what do you know? Uh, Gil Catlett showing a lot of confidence. Uh, three freshmen out there on the floor uh, right now, and he's in the key part of the ball game where the Mountaineers had to get off to a good start. It was very important to them that they do. Now they must maintain this, playing good, consistent basketball. Panthers, their 10 points. They have but two field goals. The rest have come from the foul line. Ryan misses the second, but Neverson hustles in to get the loose ball. Puts it into the backcourt. That's a violation. West Virginia will contain, take over the basketball. Carlton Neverson, number 24 for Pitt, has become the quarterback of this ball club with the loss of Dwayne Wallace because of an ankle problem. Neverson is the young man who's supposed to be running things out there right now. Not now, of course, because West Virginia has the ball. Greg Jones. This young man has done some great things single-handedly. There's another one. Well, that's an excellent move. That's a move down inside, made the penetration up in the air, and he can sky. He laid it off uh, up towards the hoop. 18 to 10 the score. We're in the first half of this important Eastern 8 game for both teams. Carlton Neverson loops underneath the Clancy. Clancy puts it up. It won't go, but a foul called on Russell Todd down inside Woody they're fronting uh, once the ball pits attacking from foul line extended in and they're setting up fancy low and they're using a man in front and once the ball does go inside with the law pass they come across the Mountaineers do try to get help behind that time Todd was there but uh, the excellent play of Clancy uh, with his head fake and uh, his body fake uh, brought the foul big Sam at the foul line he's got a couple of shots Don't know if I pointed it out earlier, but in a pickup game uh, back in the summer, he passed out and was treated in a cardiac unit at the Pittsburgh Hospital. It was feared he had a heart problem. He had a slow start this year, but he's coming on. This is the second shot. Gibson with a rebound. McCoy, this is Russell Todd. Diego McCoy, freshman. Spingarn High School. Shot won't go for him this time. The fight for the rebound, and Clancy comes out with it. Now Pitt's running the transition, get out real well. That time Diego McCoy offensively just held that basketball too long. You got to give it up. Let uh, Greg Jones, he has it now. He'll run that offense and need more passing in it. Okay, we've got a five-point ball game. 18-13 the score. West Virginia by five. Todd to Jones. This is Donnie Gibson out of the corner, out front to Diego McCoy. Well, you recognize, recognize zone in there now, Woody. They've switched, and uh, you'll see them try to work into the middle, basically from foul line extended, either with Todd or coming across. And uh, right now, they do have the Mountaineers a little confused, but they're also patient. There's the jump. That's Greg Jones. And Jones has six points on three field goals. We're at what would be the end of the first quarter, right at the 10-minute mark. 20 to 13, West Virginia. Neverson drops it back to Ryan. Now into the corner to Clancy. Underneath to Ellis, he's in some trouble. That's 
see what the call is. A holding call. And it'll be against Greg Jones. That's his second foul. Sam Ellis is like a snake inside. I think a lot of people concentrate on Sam Clancy and uh, this frees uh, Sam Ellis to do a lot of things, but he doesn't have to take it off of uh, Sam Clancy because he's an excellent basketball player in his own right. Ellis at the line. He'll be on the one and one. Coming into this afternoon's game, Ellis shooting 75% from the foul line. Now three for five on the day. And before Ellis gets a chance to shoot again, they uh, call a timeout on the floor with a score of West Virginia 20 and Pitt 14. A six-point lead for the West Virginia Mountaineers. We'll be right back at the Coliseum in Morgantown right after this word. For you parents who don't speak Klingonese, he's saying people of Earth unite and bring your kids to McDonald's for a Star Trek meal. That's a regular hamburger, fries, soft drink, a McDonald's and cookie sampler, and a Star Trek prize. Down where the West Virginia Mountaineers lead the Pitt Panthers 20 to 14. Jay, some other big Eastern eight games going on here in this fine conference, uh, both this afternoon and tonight. Well, just came to St. Bonaventure, an afternoon game. GW, who uh, played well against the Mountaineers last Saturday here, they're up at Rutgers in Massachusetts to the Colonial Classic and a, a very fine basketball team, Villanova's at Penn State. Lots of basketball action. And of course, uh, the big one, uh, big ones come up beginning on the 26th of February on four home courts somewhere. That has not been decided yet. And the way this league goes, it'll be right down to the wire. And then the uh, final two sessions will be held in Pittsburgh Civic Arena on the 29th and on the 31st. So basketball aplenty for Mountaineer and Pitt fans as far as that goes. We well, you know, Woody, I think the next eight ball games for the Mountaineers are really key. This is a good time of the year to get your club straightened out. You know, Kevin, wanting to work out some things as you come down the last three weeks, and you move in with some, uh, some momentum in the tournament play. Here's Sammy Ellis, the game's leading scorer with seven points, misses the free throw. And West Virginia comes down with it. Jones in the corner to McCoy. Pitt now picking him up man for man. Again, we've seen both the zone and the man in the ball game from the Panthers. Lowe's Moore back in there. Had to fight the ball away from his defender. Here's McCoy. He's hooked from behind. They fight for the ball. Go to the floor. We've got a wrestling match. Looks like a third down play. Well, Pitt switching defenses, and that time in a man, but the Mountaineers have uh, taken Russell Todd out and gone with three guards in the lineup to match up better with the Panthers, and we'll have to see what the Mountaineers come down and do defensively, see how the matchups stack up. Look like four guys trying to pick up a rattlesnake. I've never seen so many <laughs> quick hands in my life. Jump ball. This is uh, Olinger, 22 for Pitt. Greg Nance, 24 for West Virginia. Nance uh, trying to position his teammates around that circle. Tips it back, intended for McCoy, and he has it. Lowe's Moore. Lowe's sporting a new haircut this afternoon. Away from the ball, a foul called. It's on Sam Clancy, number 15 of Pitt. Uh, West Virginia with their offense uh, likes to go down inside. Greg Nance has been their most consistent player, and of course, uh, anytime you get him, you've got to almost front him. If you let it go down in there deep, Woody, uh, he's too tough. Clancy with two personal fouls, four team fouls against the Panthers, and the long inbounder to Lowe's Moore. West Virginia will try again. They recognize zone out of the uh, out of bounds play. He four or five passes against this, and uh, you can get uh, you can get the middle open. Good deal of jockeying going on out front between Neverson and the three Mountaineer guards. Here's Greg Nance. His shot off the iron. They tap it around. Who hit it? Pitt hit it. It's West Virginia ball. Situations like that when I'm really thankful I'm not an official. It's hard to make decisions on the spur of the moment like that. Well, the Mountaineers have had countless tries here and have yet to cash in. They did pick up a foul on Clancy. Lenny McMillan is back up off the pit bench, trying to get back in. 
very patiently. The ball slapped away by Neverson. Clancy with a return to Neverson. There's the two. That time the pit came out of that zone, and now they're pressure all over the floor. You see, they fall back into. Uh, Mountaineers have recognized it. They want to take that ball against the pressure directly to the baseline in the front court. Foul on Neverson this time, number 24, his second of the ball game. Diego McCoy was in a sticky situation. There's Tim Gergerich. Gergerich uh, is hard to read his feelings sometimes. He's very, very open with them. Other times he tries to bite the bullet and hold him back. When you jump up in an official's face like that, the best thing you can do is start gesturing to your players on the floor. And that's just what uh, Tim Gergerich did. 20 to 16 the score. West Virginia by four. We've got just over eight minutes to go in the first half. Woody O'Hara along with Jack Fleming and Jay Jacobs at courtside in Morgantown. Blows more as the Mountaineers trying to penetrate, but there's a lot of pit beef inside there. Awfully tough to get a pass inside. Well, you're looking for that good shot, Woody, and the pit is playing good defense. They're not showing the Mountaineers much. The Mountaineers, on the other hand, being patient. Moore, triple team, tried to get the pass to Nance, and Nance slaps the ball. It goes out of bounds. One official said West Virginia ball, the other says pit ball. Well, once Lowe's turned his back uh, away, this is when Pitt sagged into that middle to stop the penetration of Lowe's Moore. They did an excellent job of that that time. Lowe's turned, recognizing three men trying to pass, and uh, one out. Moore has been... Now well, Duquesne has lost the ball game, we understand. We'll get that score in a moment. Here's the rebound by West Virginia and a foul call. Joe Frizz, 21, has come back into the fray to replace Lowe's Moore at guard for West Virginia. And the foul is on Dave Olinger. Let's take a look at it again, Jay. Well, it's in the layup, into the layup, off the boards. Knocked it back outside to McCoy. He takes off, and of course, no room there. Did he have to lay the ball on the floor? The foul on Dave Alling. Now the scoreboard shows three fouls on Olinger, but we have him with just two. Earlier today, a little bit of a shocker in Pittsburgh, I believe, or was it in Pittsburgh? No, it was at uh, St. Bonnie. Only on New York, St. Bonnie defeating the Duquesne Dukes. What was that? 80 to 70. 80 to 90 to 87. 90 to 87. To the action here. Tom Adams comes out to the call. And it's against West Virginia. Greg Nance with his second personal. Scott Breeby comes into the ball game, number 34 for the Pitt Panthers. Breeby replaces Bollinger, I believe. Greeby is a uh, sophomore, 6'3", from Hamilton, Ohio. Averaging uh, almost two points a game. Greg Nance takes a seat with two fouls. Russell Todd comes back into the action for West Virginia. You know, Woody with 9.55, uh, almost uh, 10 minutes on the clock. The Mountaineers had 20, and here at 7.24, they still have 20 points on the board. They've uh, been unable to run into a little cold spot here. Not that they haven't. Had the opportunity, Credit Pitt with good defense. Mountaineer shots have just not gone. Lenny McMillan makes it a three-point ball game, and now a two-point game at 20 to 18. This was 7:20 to go in the ball game, first half, and the Mountaineers' lead has been considerably trimmed. We have a center line violation against West Virginia. And the Panthers have forced a little loss of composure on the part of West Virginia. You're exactly right, Woody. That time, uh, with the pressure, Greg Jones was left back there, and Joe Frizz came into the front court and realized that Greg needed help. He came back as the ball was in the air, and uh, they called over and back. Here's Neverson from outside, cannot tie the game, and Todd gets the rebound and a foul called on Pitt. And it looks like it may be on McMillan. It is number 14, Lenny McMillan picks up his personal. That's his first of the afternoon. Well, that was a long shot by Neverson, the 22 foot range, and got high bounce off the board. And Todd was blocked out uh, pretty well off the offensive board, but the ball came out long. You'll see Russell uh, come up on the screen. You can see him 
down inside, you see the ball bounce off long, and Todd is coming into the middle and grabs it, and the foul made over his back. Russell misses his first free throw of the afternoon, and Grevy comes down with it for Pitt. Off to Carlton Neverson, and the Panthers are on the attack. Here's Grevy against Frizz of West Virginia. Now Neverson. Underneath Clancy. What a strong move. Boy, you mentioned when you said strong, Woody. Excellent move. But uh, the damage is done is one, once he got the ball in there low. Uh, very difficult to stop. That's the third tie. Comes at 640. 20-20 the score. West Virginia. Back not long ago with a lead of eight points at 18 to 10. Now we're tied at 20. Well, Pitt's a consistent basketball team. They're going to play the same, and I think that's one of the reasons why their record's 14 and 5. They just keep coming at you. West Virginia trying to get the Panthers to overshift that zone. Inside the pass goes to Gibson. did a good job that time, Woody, of working against it by swinging one side of the uh, defense to the other and down in low. Good double team by the Mountaineers at midcourt. Very effective. There's Grevy getting the ball away. The pass down in deep is knocked out of bounds by both Frizz and Jones. So the Mountaineers are ball hawking. Well, they caught Pitt uh, in uh, a good defensive situation. The Mountaineers double team in half court. They threw the lob pass, but Todd was a little late coming in the passing lane or they could have picked it off. Okay, Neverson quarterbacks again. Head and head with Diego McCoy of the Mountaineers, number 23. This is Greavy in the corner. And a little shoving going on between Frizz and McMillan, and Joe Frizz will be caught for it. Nope, let's see. Yep, that is Joe Frizz. We thought the official, Phil Davidson, might be signifying the other way. That's number three on Frizz, and Joe's a little upset with himself. Let's take a look at it again. There's Frizz, a long uh, foul line extended. He's going to slide into the picture as uh, Greavy comes off the screen and he can't get through. And the screen set by number 14, uh, McMillan. And the foul is called on Frizz on the charge. Benny McMillan now three for three at the foul line. Lowe's Moore comes back into the game, replacing Frizz for West Virginia. And the Panthers are just a point away from the game's fourth tie. 22-21 West Virginia, 5.39 to go first half. You know, Woody, there were some ragged spots, but uh, had very little time elapsed while that was going on. Maybe a minute, a minute and a half. This ball game has been very well played, I feel. You know, when you have to adjust to changing defenses, and both teams are doing it, and I think both clubs are handling each other's defense as well. Okay, Lowe's Moore, number 11 with the ball, heavily taped thigh. He's got a strained thigh. He's had that problem for the past uh, five or six ball games. It's a situation, the only way you can get rid of it is rest, and he just won't do it. He wants to play ball. Well, I wanted to, too, but Fred Schaus had different ideas. Greg Jones with a two-pointer. He shows eight points on four fielders, and the Mountaineers go out again, 24-22. Well, we're informed that it's a brace rather than a tape job on the uh, leg of Lowe's Moore. Here's Grevy with his attempt. Lobs under to Cl or Clancy. Clancy can't hold. The shot is up by McMillan. Finally batted around and this is Sammy Ellis for the return. Gibson down with it for West Virginia. The Aliquippa flag. Down to McCoy. His shot is no good. Walking call against Diego McCoy. Well, the crowd reacts noisily here at the Coliseum in Morgantown. This is a battle. This is a battle royal. Timeout call on the floor at Morgantown, West Virginia, with a score. The West Virginia Mountaineers 24, the Pitt Panthers 22. It's so wonderful to make a child's dream come true. It's a moment of love, a joyous and safe. Hey, Jay Jacobs, and uh, here in the first half, the Panthers show on their 22 points on five field goals. 
12 for 18 at the foul line. West Virginia, on the other hand, all but four of their points have come in the field goal variety. So we have two different ways of getting the job done. We've got a very exciting game on our hands. Oh, well, we do. There's no question about it, Woody. And I think it'll go this way. The Mountaineers have had stretches in the last two weeks where they have had drought. But I, I think they're just up for mostly uh, for this basketball game. It is important. Very important in the standings. Of course, it's important for the University of Pittsburgh also. One thing, uh, this is our last telecast, and uh, I'll take the opportunity on behalf of executive producer Paul Miller to thank all of our sponsors along this network for their uh, great support this year. West Virginia shooting 63% so far in the game, Pitt 31%. That's Carlton Neverson out front against Diego McCoy. Now they go down in the corner. Lenny McMillan lobs under to Clancy, back to Neverson. This is a new alignment. Daryl Gessendanner in the ball game. West Virginia comes up with a basketball. Greg Jones against Gessendanner. Excellent move that time, Woody. Down off the board by Gibson. They came down on the break. It was three all, and Jones just back to back outside. Jones out front against Gissendenner. Now to Lowe's Moore, lobs under to Russell Todd, and Todd is fouled going up for the shot. It's on Clancy. It'll be number three on the big man. Excellent pass that time. Good movement by the Mountaineers. From one side of the offense to the other, Lowe's Moore leads a beautiful pass, catching Clancy on the upside, and the foul is called. Now this the big see, man is upset. Let's take a look at him again. See, we're excellent position by Todd. Excellent pass by Moore. Once he's inside, would be very difficult for anybody. And Russell Todd and uh, Donnie Gibson done a heck of a job out here this afternoon. Real well off the boards. Well, the third foul by Clancy forces Tim Gergerich to go to his bench and come on with 6'11", 220 pounds junior Ed Sherman from Pittsburgh. Ed, I believe, a medical redshirt last year. He's had some problems this year also, but appears to be fit. So he's the new arrival to the pit lineup. Russell Todd does not hit on the free throw, but he's got another try. Woody done be fooled by Sherman. Uh, he's just working himself back into shape. He's not as physical naturally as Sam Clancy, but he'll help this club. Todd with one of two. The Mountaineers grand total on the afternoon. Five of six from the foul line. Pitt, as we said earlier, 12 of 18. 25 to 22 the score. West Virginia by three. Gissendanner. Drops it off to McMillan. His shot is rejected by Gibson and a foul call. It'll be on Donnie Gibson, a young fellow from Aliquippa High School. We'll see a replay come up on this. Down and in the inside is the move. He has a split. He has a man open coming in on wing. Drops it off to McMillan. And uh, good penetration by Pitt. Both teams, Woody, using pressure defenses. Both teams attacking these pressure defenses baseline to baseline. In other words, they're not stopping in the front court, setting up. If they're able to attack, they do. They're looking for the uh, layup or the good foul off of it. Well, Lenny McMillan is now five for five at the line. Pitt is a team 13 of 19. McMillan with another try. It won't fall for him. West Virginia rebounding the ball. Down it comes to Lowe's Moore. Greg Jones out front. Jones being guarded out there by Lenny McMillan. Here's Dago McCoy against Daryl Gissendanner. Gissendanner almost for the basketball. Jones, McCoy in the corner. Look out. He's in big trouble. It's got it. Well, he slid on the baseline that time, laid that ball up very softly, and that's why it went for him. West Virginia on defense. Here's Pitts. Sammy Ellis, no shot. Sherman brings it back out. Gissendanner has it knocked away by Moore, picked up by McCoy, and a foul call against Pitts. It'll be on Lenny McMillan, his second foul. Tell you, Woody, you have to like the way the Mountaineers are playing team defense out there. They're really helping each other out. We'll see it come up on a replay. They're both moving. The Mountaineers are on the floor. You can see three men coming down on their break as McCoy breaks out in the lead and trips. McMillan checks out of the ball game, and Pitt comes on with more of that good bench strength. Paul Brozovich, a 6'9", 210-pound freshman from Glassport, Pennsylvania, wearing jersey number 50. So they've got a 6'11", number 44, Ed Sherman, and a 6'9", number 50, 
Paul Brozovic well, at the line, Diego McCoy. Well, Woody, they're showing a lot of size in there. The Mountaineers will probably take that speed and try to apply it with full court pressure like they have been. Ed Sherman bouncing off the floor. West Virginia will inbound it again. Greg Jones looks for the inbounder, lobs it in to Gibson. Now to Moore. Here's one of his few tries. Moe's Moore with three field goals, six points. He's been very quiet of late. Well, he's been quiet maybe offensively, but the other phase is game to her, but not today. He's played real well offensively and defensively. Pitt with the basketball. Carlton Neverson slows him down, sets it up. Gisson Danner, top of the key to Sammy Ellis, moving on McCoy. They're double-teaming him out front. Here's Gisson Danner from downtown. It's good. Motion offense that time and coming out around the pick. Gisson Danner was open for the 15-footer uh, and uh, brought it home. West Virginia now with the three-guard offense. That's Greg Jones with the ball. Diego McCoy, the other guard. Number 11 is Lowe's Moore, also in the ball game. Here's Moore. Now they fight for the rebound, and Ellis comes away with it. To Gissendanner. Daryl Gissendanner. Here's a basketball name for you. Ellis goes inside of Brozovic. Has it knocked away by Diego McCoy, but a foul call. A little freshman mistake there, Woody. Uh, the ball came inside, and he brought the ball down. I don't get a look at it or not, but he, he laid the ball down where McCoy was able, although uh, smaller in size, was able to reach in. And we'll see it come up, and uh, we'll see uh, him put the ball on the floor. He breaks into the middle, and he brings it down. There it is, and he shows it to him also, and the steal is made, and foul called, and Russell Todd's at the line. Rozovich picks up his first personal. Russell Todd back up there at the charity stripe. He's three for four on the afternoon. On the one and one. Shot does not go. And Ellis comes down with a rebound. Back into the game is Johnny Ryan, 32. Ryan goes into the corner to Neverson. And Neverson's walking with the ball. I must say, I've seen... Uh, I've seen that call overlooked many times. Neverson might have lost his concentration. He shuffled his feet, but you see a lot of that in this game. Well, you do, and a poor situation for it to happen for Pittsburgh because uh, they need this offensive uh, thrust this time. Now, Lowe's Moore's backed it outside, and they're going to work and run it down with 52 on the clock. West Virginia has missed the front end on the one and one three straight times now. That uh, four-point lead right now could be much larger. Good point, Woody, because uh, they did have the opportunities, and uh, they just weren't able to cash them in. Okay, the pit defense has been uh, signaled by the official to come out and get them. Make a move. West Virginia now with 27 seconds on the clock. 24. Tim well, Gergerich is off the right. bench. You can see him in the lower left of your screen. He's directing out there, but I don't think the Mountaineers will start anything with 10 on the clock, unless they get a layup out of it. I don't see that happening. Okay, 10 seconds remaining, first half. They see it now. Here's Jones, a little jumper rejected by Sherman. Ryan from way out, and he hits the side of the board. Neverson with a try, and they'll just head for the dressing room. Well, a bit of excitement, a great deal of excitement, in fact, here at the Coliseum in Morgantown. We're at halftime in this important Eastern 8 clash with a score, West Virginia 29, Pittsburgh 25. Oh, it's the best thing, slide does in store. Can you think of a reason you should have to pay more? Don't Virginia comes back with Lowe's Moore carrying six points. Diego McCoy with two points. Donnie Gibson is coming out with four points. Russell Todd with three points. And Greg Jones, 10 points on that fine shooting from 18 to 20 foot range, angle left from the basket in the first half. Donnie Gibson, who is from Aliquippa, PA, a 6'8 sophomore, sat out last year as a red shirt, standing in against Clancy. Gibson has three inches, two inches on Clancy, but Clancy has a lot of weight on Donnie. 
Clancy has a build that you wouldn't believe. Like a rock. Here they are jumping it up for the start of the second half. West Virginia leading by four. Batted around Clancy. Had it. And then Gibson got his hand on it and tapped it to Lowe's Moore. West Virginia on the attack and the outside workers, Moore and Jones. Diego McCoy pops out to take the ball. And away from that ball, Gibson was vying with Clancy for position. Russell Todd came over to take that spot. Turnaround shot by Gibson. Fails, and on the rebound, a foul called against West Virginia. Going after it was Carlton Neverson. He was offended from the rear side. The foul is charged to Lowe's Moore. Well, that time, Jack, uh, the Mountaineers were patient. Four or five passes. Got the ball into a good shooting position. It just didn't go. Now they're out pressuring in a 2-2-1. All right, the 2-2-1 for West Virginia. And Pitt moving the ball against it. And the ball comes almost to half court to Clancy. Clancy whips it over to Neverson. Now they come down to McMillan. McMillan's double teamed and a little trouble, but the foul is called. Foul will be charged to West Virginia. And they get this one to Russell Todd. That is his second. We like to make break that pressure going baseline. And Pitt took the ball clear of the baseline, got it inside, drew Todd on the fake, got him up in the air, drew the foul. And that is Carlton Neverson. 29 to 27. Two-point advantage for West Virginia. They go long down to Diego McCoy. McCoy a little reluctant to take that shot. He hasn't had that much luck with his shooting. Right, Jack, but I think the, the point there was that nobody was coming down on the weak side. He had no rebounding, and he was pretty far out in the corner. So he backed it out. Here is Moore now coming back out again to Jones. Pitt playing the zone as you see it. 2-3 zone, uh, and the, the shots will be in the seam. That's where Jones got his shots in the first half. And into the middle, they try to attack. Ball goes into the left corner to Gibson. Back out again to Jones. They work for the shot. Jones has, that's the longest one he's taken in and out on. He follow up by Danny Gibson. Gibson has been a tower of strength for the last two games around the boards. Here's a steal. And uh, re-steal, yes. Panthers have it back, and they've got men coming down the floor. Sammy Ellis scores it, and a foul called on the play. So you, Gail Catlett's upset on that play uh, very much so, Jack, because down at the other end, after the steal was made, he felt Jones was fouled. The shot was not. Pitt gets the ball back, takes it down the floor, and a chance for a three-point play. So there could have been a five-point interchange right there. Dottie Gibson charged with his second foul. West Virginia with its third team foul. Sammy Ellis at the line, and Ellis went four for eight in the first half. Ellis hits, and it makes it a 31-30 ball game, and the Panthers come up with a big one. Jones in trouble as Pitt applies that patented pressure. Lowe's four to Russell Todd, and it's too far for him. Well, the uh, double team right here at midcourt, and Lowe's got into it and then threw that high lob pass, and he really couldn't see who was coming down the far side. It's a very difficult pass to make. West Virginia lets them come to half court this time. Neverson handling the ball and the feed to Clancy. Clancy misses inside. The ball is kept in play, but comes outside to Neverson. Olinger. Russell Todd came down with it. That's more attacking for West Virginia. Pitt setting up in the zone. They bring Olinger out here on the point. Todd comes to Jones. Jones, a freshman from Rayan High School, Youngstown, Ohio. Going to Diego McCoy, a freshman from Washington. And Russell Todd, a turnaround shot. He's a freshman from Northport. Pretty well covered inside, Jack. He made a great move. He kept the ball off the floor, and uh, Jones creates that turnover down there. This in handling by Neverson, and they give it right back to West Virginia. Want to correct one point? We were talking about North Fork High School, where um, Todd played his basketball. That team has won six consecutive state championships, and if it wins the AA title this year in West Virginia, will have will tie the national record. Jay, boy, they've just had a great program down there. Lowe's Moore gets Beautiful. it inside to Russell Todd. Doesn't drop. He taps it in. 35-30. And we get a foul call. Basket good. Now they're really getting inside the pit zone right now, Jack, and uh, Tim Durich has called a timeout. Foul is charged to Carlton Neverson. The score is 35-30. With 17.08 to play, we'll be back right after this word.
Presenting McDonald's Star Trek meal. Parents, take a good look. It's the only meal approved for your kids by the United Federation of Planets. Outside, the Enterprise. Pitt with one. And Todd is at the line. Successful three-point play. 36 to 30. That's with 17.08 to go. And the Panthers, Lenny McMillan getting the ball over to Neverson. Neverson advancing into the offensive zone. I'll tell you, that Greg Jones gets all over you. I wouldn't want him chasing me, I guarantee you. Foul called on Donnie Gibson, blocking. Number three on Donnie. Donnie Gibson, sophomore from Aliquippa, PA, committed the foul. Jack, you have to be impressed with the Mountaineers. Uh, three small people in there. They've really done a great job. They're zoning now, 2-3 off the inbounds. There's the shot by McMillan. And the rebound by Sam Bam. And he goes to the basket and scores. Now that is the biggest weapon that Pitt can throw at you. And I'm not, uh, I'm not making jokes. He is big and tough. But uh, West Virginia has been very effective against Clancy this afternoon. But that is his move. 36-32. West Virginia leading Pitt by four. And the Panthers playing that defense very loose out in front. They'll come after the ball. Oh, excellent penetration that time. Goaltending called on Clancy. The shot is credited Diego McCoy, making it 38-32. Real good movement that time by the Mountaineers. You'll see uh, the ball switching from one side of the zone. Jones over to Moore. Here's McCoy open, splitting the seam down inside of the goaltending. Meantime, we get an offensive foul called on Carlton Neverson of Pitt, and that is his third. So West Virginia puts it back in play. 11,356 here today. Fine turnout to watch the Mountaineers and the Panthers. Russell Todd turning around as it knocked away. And here's Pitt driving, and the basket made by Lenny McMillan. Sammy Ellis got a hand on the ball, knocked it away. 38-34. Clock showing 15 57 to play in a good ball game, a torrid ball game. Moore's in trouble at half court. Bouncer goes to Diego McCoy. And McCoy loses the ball. Well, they're holding on that ball a little bit too long, Jack. They want to penetrate that, get the ball deep down the baseline as fast as you can without putting it on the floor. But a little bit, they held the ball a little bit too long, letting the double teams get set up against them. Neverson, Jr. from New York City. Into Clancy. There's their weapon. Back outside, and the shot made by Neverson. Clancy could not get in for his shot, so he just fired it back out, and Neverson hit it, 38-36. Well, Pitt in a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one pressure-type defense. It hurt the Mountaineers last time down. Stabbed that time by Sammy Ellis, knocked it away. Directly in front of the uh, scoring table here, it looked to be a good call. Yeah, I think it was. See, uh, and it was also a good defensive play. Yes, it was. They had a good double team. Good clean there. stab. Yes. Here is Greg Jones on the attack for West Virginia, met outside by Dave Olinger. They work against that zone now. And the many facets of the amoeba defense are interesting, Jay. They have to be to a basketball man like yourself, the way Fran Webster teaches it. Well, he, he does a good job. They're showing a 1-3. They're trying to give you a 1-3-1 one, one look, Jack, but really, it, it, after that basic pass foul line, it's a 2-3 zone. But the Mountaineers have uh, done a good job. They've been patient. They're working it. They go baseline and try to attack in. So McCoy goes with the ball over to, or rather, Jones to McCoy. McCoy comes in and reverses and misses. He has a rebound, and goes up for another shot. Now he does it and gets it. Three efforts by Diego McCoy. Tremendous effort that time. That's what you call persistence. Boy, he was about to give up. Under heavy pressure. Lancey at half court. Carlton Neverson goes on the far side over there to Sammy Ellis. West Virginia chasing the man for man, and here's Gibson reaching in. Well, so, Jack, they picked that up on the side. They do have Clancy once he positions. You talked uh, uh, a little bit ago about the strength of Sam Clancy inside, and you're very true. Uh, he is strong, and you can't play behind him inside. You've got to position the front. Clancy misses an important shot. Greg Jones going after the ball, and we get the foul call.
Foul called on Sammy Ellis. That time a difference uh, in the calls by the officials. Uh, one set out of bounds, West Virginia. West Virginia and the other one uh, went foul on 52, Sammy Ellis, and they called foul. They called a foul on uh, Sammy. Now we have uh, Tim Gurich, the pit coach, uh, discussing with officials, and uh, the original call was foul 52. Gail Catler moving into the picture now, wants to know what's going on. They have wiped the uh, foul out, Jack, on Sammy Ellis. It's in out of bounds, West Virginia, and of course now Gail Catlett has come up and wants to know exactly what the situation is. Now Catlett is calling for a conference. So Timmy and Gail both out there. Timmy just walking into the picture on the right side. I think Gail listen uh, to what they have to say. But he's concerned because originally the foul was called on uh, Ellis and then taken away because he said the ball was dead. The official made the original call, ball dead out of bounds after the foul occurring after this. And so they've wiped out the foul. You like to be official, Jack? Would you like to be an official? <laughs> I cannot believe it. There's no way. No way. I don't care how much they get a game. There is no way. Ready to go. Greg Jones will inbound it for the Mountaineers. To Lowe's Moore. West Virginia and Pitt. Always a classic matchup. Jones into the front court to Russell Todd. West Virginia playing with three freshmen out there. Greg Nance has come in to relieve Donnie Gibson. Nance has seen limited time this afternoon. Got into early foul trouble. Picked up two very early. Russell Todd. Outside to Jones. Lowe's Moore. Again to Jones. Now to Diego McCoy. Looking for Nance. Can't find him. That's exactly right. They're trying to post him inside. They're looking for him. Looking there. Oh, Nance. Nance speaking yep. behind Clancy that time, and they didn't catch him. This is Diego McCoy. He's in real trouble. Well, foul was called on Sammy Ellis. Well, the foul he didn't get down here, he picked up down at the other end, so. Pitt using Sammy Ellis. Lenny McMillan, Sam Clancy, Carlton Deverson, and Dave Olinger. Original starting lineup. West Virginia, well, both clubs have used a lot of people. But West Virginia's got a completely uh, switched around lineup and has played much of this game with three guards. Here's a traveling call against Russell Cobb of West Virginia. So that turns the ball over to the Panthers again. And each club has been plagued by a lot of turnovers in this game. 13 8 to play. West Virginia leading by four, 40 to 36. At the Coliseum in Morgantown. The shot by Sammy Ellis right there. Ellis has 13 points. West Virginia leads. 40 to 38. And here it comes down to Todd. And it is rejected by Clancy in a brilliant defensive play. And is carried out of bounds on the near side. West Virginia gets it back. Great block that time. Excellent penetration by Jones. He just split the press and brought it down all the way. You see it picked up a replay. Here's Jones splitting, going down inside the drop off. Todd goes right up. Right there's Clancy. Oh boy. Awesome. West Great Virginia play. gets it back on the out of bounds ball following the block shot. Jones goes toward the left corner. Over to McCoy. They have Nance back working deep. Now he moves out into the corner to take the pass. Well, Pitt's really packed it back in. I think uh, Jones can get a good, he can hit that jump shot, but they'll have to bring it off a couple passes. There's the move. And a great move by McCoy. The basket was good. And a foul call. McCoy was bumped. I thought, I thought he was going to lose his footing. Well, and I then he took off of the basket. I did too, Jack. The foul was on Lenny McMillan. As Diego McCoy hit the shot, McCoy will be at the foul line. We get a timeout of the ball game. Ball five to play this afternoon at the Coliseum in Morgantown. West Virginia leading the Pitt Panthers, 42 to 38.
You're smiling and all the while your heart just pounds away. The train in builds and ends on. Back at the WBU Coliseum in Morgantown, we watch as Greg Jones penetrates. And that shot misfires. And here is Greg Nance. Rolled it over the rim. West Virginia led in this ballgame 47 to 38. Pitt responded with the basket. It's a seven point lead, but the nine point advantage at 47 to 38 was the biggest lead of the ballgame. I think that lead uh, was established the Mountaineers mainly through uh, the defensive boards. I think they've done a great job, Jack. I think you have to agree that down inside the Mountaineers have just battled the boards and they're really here in the second half won the boards and uh, ten next ten minutes if they can continue this they're going to have a they're going to have a win and they've done it with some small people in there but uh, they've run the transition well and uh, they've hit the boards uh, defensively and also been on the offensive boards Diego McCoy a freshman heading for the Mountaineers 48 to 40 West Virginia leading by eight. Pitt has John Ryan in there Dave Olinger is in Carlton Neverson Sammy Ellis and Sam Clancy. The lefty from Washington, D.C. converts another one. 49 40, so again it's a nine point lead, and that is with 10 12 to play. All right, Kent moving against the pressure. Coming down to Ellison. Ellis fires. Rebound, Russell Todd, West Virginia. Outlet. Goes four. Down to McCoy. And they come patiently out to Todd again. Good move. They backed it outside, going to set it up. And Pitt is going man for man. McCoy into Todd. Todd with a turnaround jumper. Get them play by Nance. Knocked out of bounds and out the pit. And the inbounds play will come from Dave Olinger. John Ryan. Trap on him. Clancy. Olinger. Beautiful shot. Ollinger getting his first field goal. 49 42. Jack, he's been quiet today. He's a good shooter. Those more. There's more, and they're going to get a trap on him. He moves it back out to Russell Todd. West Virginia continues to play with three freshmen in there, and they play well. Todd, Jones, and McCoy. McCoy makes his move into the key. He gets his shot in and out. Clancy sweeps the board. Nine minutes to go. Down they come. Ryan with the ball. And this shot rolls over the rim. Neverson misses. But look here coming. Miss. And a foul call. So going to the foul line will be Sammy Ellis. And the foul is charged to West Virginia's Greg Nance. That will be his third. Ellis is going to the line to shoot a pair. Okay, we'll see a replay come up, Jack, on this as we've got a picture of Gil Catlin. Here's the move. Now Ryan swinging it over. The pass down inside. Here's the shot. The outside, Todd has inside position, but under a little bit too far. Ellis goes up and over him, and he swings in. So there's the foul. The score is 49-42 in favor of West Virginia. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Sammy Ellis, Pitt's leading scorer, came into the ball game shooting 74.6 at the foul line on 85 of 114. He's made five out of nine this afternoon, and now he goes up there for two shots for the Panthers. They lead by, or rather, they trail by seven. Ellis averaging 17 points per game on the season, and he has 15 on the afternoon. He's been their most consistent player up front, Jack. Uh, when a jump goes off the rim. Uh, one thing, there was an excellent timeout by Gil Kent. I think he sensed a couple bad shots down there offensively. He didn't want the club to take it. He wants to stop it right now. Ellis converts one of two, and the score is 49 to 43. Nance saves the ball. West Virginia leading Pitt by six. 8.44 to go. And the old rivals have staged a good one. More from Todd outside. Pitt man for man. Nance posts high, and he has Ellis out there, rather has Clancy out there with him. 
is Lowe's four going to Diego McCoy. Jack, you watch the movement now. Right, he spread it out. Uh, Gale has. That's what uh, came up with the timeout. I think he's a semi delay game. He'll uh, take the layup if he can get it, but uh, he'll hold on to that basketball and try to run the clock down, too. We do a post game show with him on radio, and he said, Let's right. make, make it a quick one today because I have to go. Oh, look at this. Yeah. There's a trap there, Ellis and Ryan. And uh, Sammy Ellis has called for the foul. A few hands in there that time. Well, we're going to come down this eight minute mark, and West Virginia spread it out using the court. So, you know, Pitt's going to have to take the fouls. They're going to have to get the turnovers, and now it's up to West Virginia in a one on one situation to make the fouls. All right, so they go for the freshman, and Greg Jones has not been at the foul line uh, today. He's in there on the one and one. Hits. Jones is a 73.3% shooter. Well, I think Gail likes his matchups to the people he has in there, and I think he feels he can use this uh, delay game uh, to work for him. Russell Todd with the rebound. Excellent. And they're back out with it, too. 50 to 43. You know what Greg Jones wants to be after he gets out of school? No. TV or radio announcer. Well, that's, <laughs> he's enthusiastic, I'll oh, tell you that. Oh, boy. We had him on our weekly TV show this week. How'd he do? Outstanding. Outstanding talker. Fine young man. Great sense of humor. Here he is with the ball being chased by John Ryan. Back out to Russell Todd. Todd was overplayed. Now we get violation called on Todd. 50 to 43. Pitt did a good job of narrowing West Virginia down and that spread out into a certain area and then was able to create the double team. Ryan out and Daryl Gissendanner is into the ball game. This is Gissendanner. That's his shot, but it doesn't stick. Tap back outside. And Neverson goes down to Ellis, gets his shot, and he hangs it in there. Good feet of 45. 725 to go. Would you know it? Pitt and West Virginia. They play another one just like this at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. It'll be a dandy, I'm sure. Got Diego McCoy with the ball. Stalking him is Olinger, and now the ball goes to Lowe's four, and the man with him out there is Carlton Neverson. Four needs help. Gets it to Russell Todd and to Greg Jones. Now down to Todd. Well, I think... The semi delayed Jack the semi delayed uh, now they're spraying themselves out Pitt's doing a good job of defense because the Mountaineers not looking at the hoop I think they'd like to take a shot got to get more movement in there he cuts the basket foul call on Sammy Ellis you know Jack I see a uh, Mountaineers getting a break on that when uh, Russell Todd in that double team was trying to call timeout before he could call timeout. Uh, the uh, foul was called on Sammy Ellis. Now here's McCoy then going down the side. Here's Todd going to swing into the double team. Now it's one on one, but he turns his back and uh, he'll come over to get some help. And there he reaches in and the foul is called as uh, Russell's trying to call timeout. Joe Frizz is returning. Frizz has been in foul trouble this afternoon, of all things. Diego McCoy coming out. Played a heck of a game, Jack. Right, they want to give him a rest. A good point. I think they do want to give him a rest, and also I think they'd like to have the uh, senior Joe Frizz and the uh, intelligence of Joe Frizz and the experience of Joe Frizz in, the, in there in this delayed game. He can run it. Todd hit a big one, and now he has another one coming on the bonus shot, 51 to 45. And it's in there. Two big ones for Russell Todd. And with 6.45 to go, it is 52 to 45. Panthers are trapped in the backcourt, and they move against it to Neverson. Now they come down heavy on the right side, Sammy Ellis. Neverson. And he hits. 52 to 47. Lead pass down to Joe Frizz comes under to then drop it a reverse shot, and the foul is called. No, it's goaltending. Goaltending called on Lenny McMillan. Is that what he signaled? That's what I thought he signaled. Two two fingers up there. We'll see. Uh... Now we see no signals. Yeah. 
The man singled uh, with two fingers. Yes, he did. Now we've lost it completely. Well, we'll let this speak for itself here. Jack, I pick up a technical foul uh, for hitting the board. The ball laid up on the board. And uh, no basket. Technical foul hitting the bank board. Score still remains 52 47, West Virginia. No basket. Timeout, West Virginia. <laughs> Let's see if we can pick up the uh, explanation here. Well, we have a timeout in the ball game with 6:24 to go. West Virginia leading pit 52 to 47, and we'll be right back. Reliable parts are a must. For your car, truck, or bus. Name brands you can trust. Well, put the ball in play at half court. Boy, it took a long time to get that one. Uh, well, Gil Cantlett noticed the call by the official, and he came up and said, is it a, uh, is the goal good on goaltending? He said, yes. He said, why is it on the board? Pitt doing uh, some outstanding pressuring out there. We had Todd in real trouble, but he moved the ball. Joe Frizz, as we pointed out, came in. Now, Phil Collins is back in. We haven't seen him since back. There's a pass just for Collins. Lowe's board tried to save it, and Pitt came up with it. So they have Phil Collins up in the front line with Russell Todd, and they play with three guards, Frizz, Jones, and Moore. Collins should have handled that pass, Jack. And a miss inside by Dave Olinger, and out of bounds to West Virginia. Collins can be very cold because he hasn't played since early. And now uh, Catlett uh, has Diego McCoy up ready to get back into the ball game. Probably for one of the big men to spread it out more uh, in this delayed game. This is Greg Jones, the freshman. The Russell Todd. Jones comes out to take it. Now to Todd. Todd comes under and lays it up nicely. By that time, they went to the hoop well. They didn't try to uh, work their offense back out. They worked it towards the hoop. A give and go play. That is Neverson. Listen, ball tapped outside to Jones. Jones coming down all the way to the basket. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, call a doctor. I mean to tell you, he flew down the floor. Jones went down and slammed it. We got 5.05 to play. 5.05 to play in the ball game. Here's the replay coming out the miss shot. Of course, all the all pits at the hoop, and uh, Jones is running right by Lowe's. He has already decided what he's going to do. And there it is. West Virginia pops up with the 11 point lead with 5.05 playing the ball game. And that is the biggest lead by far in the game. The Mountaineers had built it up to nine at 47 to 38, and again at 49 to 40. Pitt had led by as many as four early at four to nothing. And West Virginia got a tie at four and scored 10 points in a row after trailing six to four, or rather eight to four, to move out to a 14 to eight lead. Pitt tied it at 20 20 and 22 22, but the Panthers have not had the lead since back when they led eight to four. And West Virginia charged up the tie it at eight and then took a 10 to eight lead. Reminding you that West Virginia and Duquesne are here on Wednesday night at the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Duquesne won a hotly contested battle, 73 to 66. So another all-important Eastern Eight game as they move into February and the stretch run, Jay. And this Eastern Eight race is coming down to the wire. Coming into today's action, it was Rutgers, Pitt, Duquesne, Villanova. Duquesne lost to St. Bonaventure this afternoon. Do you never quite know? All of these clubs have a lot of head-to-head -head meetings in the final two to three weeks. Well, they do, and, and uh, I mentioned earlier, Jack, uh, if you want to have a club start to peak and start playing better basketball, I think it'd be right now, heading down the next three weeks before you hit tournament play. 
The Mountaineers have played well here today. They've taken it to the Panthers. Uh, they've spread them out all over the floor, played excellent uh, team defense, worked the boards, and they deserve to have the lead that they have. Get ready to go. Ollinger is trapped at half court, gets it down to Clancy, and Clancy beats McMillan, and McMillan drives and scores it. So Lenny McMillan drives in and scores. 58 to 49. We see Cleve Edwards, assistant coach, and Tim Gurridge both out there upset. Uh, Diego McCoy, we'll see on the replay. He slides into position, but I see, I don't see anything of undercutting. I see him just getting position, and the position of the body of McMillan is that he flips himself up. And I see no intention on the part of uh, McCoy in there to uh, create that. McCoy got into position, and McMillan turned, you can see, yes. in the air and going to the basket. So it is 58 to 49 with 454 remaining to go in the ballgame. Daryl Gissendanner coming back into the ballgame for Pitt. Thus far in the ballgame, West Virginia has made 23 of 44, 52.3%. And Pitt is at 17 of 42. That's roughly right around 40%. So Gissendanner is in to replace Lenny McMillan. We've yeah. got. Excuse me, I'll tell you one thing about this pick club, and I think you'll agree with me. They will not quit. No, They're absolutely not. not. Uh, I've seen them twice this year. Uh, I saw them play Maryland, and Maryland up 19 points, and they will not quit on you. They'll keep plugging away. Now we got Catlett down at the end of the floor asking a question. Now he's coming back. Down comes Jones. Jones going to the basket. Doesn't drop. Fine move. And the ball out of bounds to West Virginia. In there hustling to get after that basketball was Carlton Neverson. And it eluded him and went out of bounds. I'll tell you, he had a tough job. He was the only one back defending. West Virginia had three on one and couldn't cash it in on two tries. 58 to 49. Mountaineers leading by nine. Inbounds play comes deep to Lowe's Moore. Moore covered by Gissendatter. And fit his man for man now. There's more looking for help to Collins. And Collins is fouled by Clancy. That's number five on Clancy. Clancy fouls out of the ball game with four minutes and 37 seconds to go. Three field goals, one for two at the line, seven points. You see come up on replay, Clancy's fifth foul. A heck of one to go out on, but they're going after the basketball. Collins has it, and there's the reach around down inside across the body by Clancy. But really, Jack, uh, Mountaineers have done an excellent uh, job on him this afternoon, and he's really not been a factor because of the Mountaineers' defense on him in this game. But I'm sure you'd like to have a player of his caliber in the last four minutes in there, but uh, he won't be with the Panthers today. Lenny McMillan returns to the Panther lineup. Phil Collins will be at the foul line for West Virginia. Collins had two free throws in the first half. He made him. He came into the ballgame shooting 71.2 at the foul line. And he hits. Collins came out of Dodge City Junior College after his freshman year. Ranked as the top JC player in the country. And he's from Palos Heights, Illinois, in the Chicago Southwest suburbs. Collins hits again. So Collins is four for four at the foul line. West Virginia leading 60 to 49 with 433 to play. Now they're in a one-two-two zone. Back in tight and go to the boards and try to get the ball back. So they will challenge the Panthers shoot over. Here's McCoy breaking up the pass. McCoy comes down. And they rule a violation against McCoy. And the ball is out of bounds to Pitt. Ed Sherman coming into the ball game for the Panthers. Here is McCoy's steal. Here's the turnover right there, Jack. That's where he turns it over. But he, they let him come down, and uh, officials have come down, lay the ball up. But the, uh, the whistle was blown. Catlett, Smith, Tim Gurridge, picture of them along the sideline, each directing traffic towards their club. Gail Catlett and Bobby Smith are giving signals, and one has two fingers up on one hand and one on the other. They, they have opposite signals. The kids are looking over. Right. Which one? Catlett's saying, take mine, take mine. 
Shot is short, pulled out of the air by Lowesborn. Lenny McMillan took the shot. More to Russell Todd. Right back to him. That is Greg Jones. So they've got Moore and Jones and McCoy in that lineup. Collins and Todd are the two big men. And again, they play with they play with three freshmen and a first-year junior college transfer. And a jump ball call. As Todd could not get rid of it. Well, Russell's coming out in this delay game. He seems to be ending up with the basketball all the time. He needs to give it up a little bit quicker, not hold on to it. When you hold on to the basketball, where your trouble starts for you, Jack. 60 to 49, West Virginia Lady Pit by 11, 346 to play. Todd jumping against Ellis. Todd 6'7, Sammy Ellis 6'7. And Pitt has the tap. Carlton Neverson. And a pass deflected by Greg Jones. Back they come again. They are hustling today. They really are. And you have to like Jones in this situation. He wants that pass. There's an overplay and a great steal by Carlton Neverson. And he goes down and slams it for Pitt. Neverson gets the steal. Pitt gets a timeout. So the score is 60 to 51, 326. And if anybody had the idea that Timmy Gergerich had thrown this one in the hopper and said it's all over, you got to think again. He's got lots of time from a coach's standpoint to make his move. Here comes that steal now. As you see, the play made by Carlton Neverson. So well, he takes it all the way in. Slam. Slam. That play uh, created for Carlton Neverson because in the uh, situation before with Greg Jones, he lofted that ball too high in the air, Jack, allowing. Uh, Neverson, Neverson to come from the weak side and make the interception and steal. Well, West Virginia and Pitt have been doing this for a long time, and it goes back in my memory to the days when Pitt played in a very small gym under their stadium. And it's very seldom you could ever remember a West Virginia Pitt game that wasn't played with intensity. West Virginia leads in the series 72 to 60. A lot of those uh, victories were accumulated during those very lush years when uh, Huntley was followed by West and followed by Thorne and followed by Williams. Followed by Jacobs. Uh, Jacobs was in there somewhere. But it dates back. Its inception came in the year 1906, and Jacobs was also around for that. Yeah, that's right. So they know what it is to play each other. That's right, 1906. And I can remember the story of Fred Schaus when he was head coach of the Mountaineer varsity and his freshman team was behind at halftime. He ran into the dressing room and chastised him. And he said, if you don't know what it is to play Pitt, you better get out of here. Well, Look at this. Trouble for Collins. Excellent defense played by Pitt. And Phil Collins could not get the ball in play. But he got a timeout. <laughs> that is the fourth timeout for the Mountaineers. You know, Jack, getting back to that story of Fred Schaus, you're exactly right. I was on that ball club, and uh, we are not playing well up at uh, Pitt. He came down into the dressing room, and, uh, boy, he really let us have it. There wasn't any doubt about it, but uh, we responded well and won the ball game. So the clock is not turning at the moment. Three minutes and 26 seconds to play here at the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown. 11,356 watching West Virginia and Pitt. And they're seeing some kind of a basketball game. Well, Gail Catlett uh, getting his club to tell them to be patient. Uh, 326 on the clock. They know eventually if they move that basketball, they're going to be fouled. They'll have to make their fouls. Up on the other end, Timmy Gurich is uh, setting up defenses. will allow him to attack the Mountaineers offensively and make the steal. They also want to look, Pitt does, at uh, probably who they can take the foul on. Of course, we're not anywhere in that area yet. Uh, you have to watch for deliberate fouls. They don't want to do that. They want to create the situation by good double teams. But Pitt has a very, other than Sherman, has a very quick club in there. West Virginia coming back out. Lowe's Moore, Greg Jones, Diego McCoy, Russell Todd, and Phil Collins. Collins to make the inbounds play. And the bouncer goes out of bounds. West Virginia finding it difficult to inbound the ball against the tenacious defense played by the Panthers. All right, Pitt has it in. Carlton Everson now against the West Virginia zone. Uh -oh. Shot is by Sammy Ellis right there. So Ellis brings the ball game back to 60 to 53. 3.15 to go. Here's Moore trap. And a traveling call on Lowe's Moore. Two straight turnovers, Jack. And uh, 
That's not a good situation. If Collins taking the ball out of bounds, he found it that time, got it in, but uh, Moore turned it over. All right, the Panthers on the attack again. Sherman came in to replace Clancy. And there is an open man underneath, and Carlton Neverson hits it. 60 to 55 with 2.59 to go. Diego McCoy loads Moore. Now Moore is in the front court. Moore gets the ball over to Greg Jones. Jones is running for his life on the dribble. He's double teamed. And the call on the far side is a foul on Lenny McMillan. That will be his fifth. Well, Pitt's a club that can come out and chase you. They can chase you full court. They can chase you half court. Uh, those players have long arms on them, and they do a real good job of positioning you so that you get caught in double teams. And that time, uh, when you put the ball on the floor against, it's very difficult. You see Greg Jones in this situation out front. He's dribbling. He has the ball on the floor. Now when he gives it up, the long arm's there, and you'll see the reach-in foul. Lenny McMillan fouls out with uh, nine points, two from the floor, five out of six at the line. Sam Clancy went out at the 437 mark. Three field goals, one out of two free throws, seven points. Sammy Ellis is the leading scorer for the Panthers, and he has 20 points in the ball game right up to this point. Now Scott Grevy is coming back in, had a brief appearance in the first half, and I don't know whether you mentioned or not his brother Kevin who was an All-American in Kentucky, plays for the Washington Bullets of the NBA. No, I, I did mention it, uh, Jack, but I, I had known that he had been. I think this is an advantage here for the Mountaineers. I think that McMillan is a uh, better basketball player in Grevy, and the Mountaineers can take advantage of Grevy in the uh, ball game. Greg Jones at the line, hits 61 to 55. Now the clock reads 2.44 to go. Jones misses. And the positioning outside, Carlton Neverson gets the ball. West Virginia leading by six. And here comes Pitt on the attack. Now the feed goes into the lane. Sammy Ellis for the turnaround shot that doesn't drop. We have a foul call. Well, Ellis broke in there, and uh, McCoy got caught behind him and uh, drew the foul as Ellis uh, turned towards the hoop. Russell Todd is charged with that, and oh, that is sorry. his fourth. I worked the radio the first half, and I was behind the West Virginia coaches every time they were up. Now at this end, you're behind the pit coaches whenever they come up. Here's Sammy Ellis, and he hits. And they're doing this uh, with uh, very little time coming off the clock. Uh, clock stop. 61 to 56. West Virginia's lead cut to five. And another one good for Sammy Ellis. 61 to 57. A four-point lead. Russell Todd goes and slams. Excellent. So they got behind the Panthers right. that time. Excellent uh, lead pass by Jones. He caught the ball, looked straight down the floor, uh, and there was uh, Russell Todd. Beautiful shot for the Panthers. Darrell Gissendanner, 63-59. Right to 59. Now Lowe's four. Going all the way to the basket. Doesn't drop. And the rebound for the Panthers. Two minutes to go. Pit down by four. Plenty Very of much in the ball game. Plenty of time left. There's Sherman inside a mismatch. On top. Rebound by Collins. They need to hold on to the basketball. Oh. Here's McCoy with a great play, and he caught. Overruled. Traveling call. Great play by McCoy, but they caught him traveling in the process. Dave Olinger ready to come back in for the Panthers. Tell you, Jack, as it comes up, it looks a lot like uh, Lynn Swan going after that basketball uh, or after that football. They're both going up in the air. It looks like McCoy wins the battle. But there, before he it's takes a couple step. steps before he laid it down. Good call. Now to check them out, Olinger is reporting back into the ball game, and Pitt has taken a timeout. We have a minute 51 remaining to play. The score is 63 to 59. West Virginia. Had Billets lead to 11 at 60 to 49. Since that time, the Mountaineers have picked up three, and Pitt has scored 10 in a stretch run that comes from uh, 4:37 down to a minute 51. So uh, what we're talking about is two minutes and 46 seconds in which Pitt has made a run at the Mountaineers, picking up 10 points to West Virginia's three, and cutting the lead from 60 to 49 to 63 to 59. 
Well, West Virginia did two things. They went into a delay game and uh, got caught with two turnovers in that situation, off of scores by Pitt, and in both turnovers in the backcourt, and uh, Pitt capitalized on it. And another thing, a timeout use coming down the stretch uh, by Pitt has uh, put them within four points, and uh, we have a situation to have the basketball right now. Panthers coming back out with Sammy Ellis, Carlton Neverson, Dave Olinger. Daryl Gisson Danner, and Ed Sherman. West Virginia with Diego McCoy, Greg Jones, Lowe's Moore, Russell Todd, and Phil Collins. And now Pitt is on the attack. Carlton yeah. Neverson. You see McCoy, they're boxing right now, Jack. Him right out again. Great shot by Neverson from the lane. He penetrated 63 the box. to 61. Penetrated the defense. There's a steal. And here's a steal. Neverson over to Sherman. And now the Panthers with an opportunity to tie up the ball game. Clock reads a minute 22. West Virginia playing his own. Sherman goes to the basket. Listen. And a foul called on the play. Foul charged to West Virginia, and it will be charged to Russell Todd, and that will be his pick. So Russell Todd fouls out of the ball game. Todd coming out with four field goals, and at the line, he has made six out of nine. 14 points. And he comes out at the 115 to go, Mark. Jack Russell Todd, excuse me, has played a heck of a game here today. He's worked both ends of the floor real well. It's been a key in the uh, Mountaineer pressure defense, and uh, now he's fouled out. I think that's going to be a loss uh, here in the final uh, 115 of the ball game. West Virginia used a box with a man on uh, Sammy Ellis that time, Diego McCoy chasing him, and uh, Pitt penetrated it into the middle and drew the foul with uh, Sherman going to the line. Scoreboard shows five on Russell. He's still out there. He's waiting for Greg Nance to come into the ball game. Standing ovation for Russell Todd. Why not? He's played a heck of a game, I'll tell you. Well, once he got suited up and got the opportunity to play, he has come oh, on like gangbusters here. You're exactly right. I think he's over all these problems now. And uh, coming down the stretch, he's going to be a vital force. Uh, for West Eddie Virginia. Sherman at the line, Jay, has made six out of eight. And he's got two shots. Sherman misses one. 63 61. West Virginia leading by two. A minute 15 to play in the ballgame. Sherman, 6'11 junior from Baldwin High School at the line. Sherman hits, and it's a one point ball game. 63 62. Now the Panther pressure is on, and West Virginia works against it. There's Greg Jones. Jones over the 10 second line. Outside to Lowe's Moore. Clock down to a minute four. 63-62. And Moore's foul by Daryl Gissendanner. Number one on Gissendanner. Jones gave it up that time. Moore uh, penetrating laterally. If you can penetrate laterally, you're going across the floor, uh, I should say, at midcourt. And the trip is made. As he steps in, uh, Gissendanner right over his foot and trips. Moore missed earlier. He shot the one technical for West Virginia. So the lefty from Mount Vernon, New York, puts up the shot good. 64 to 62, a minute three to go. Lowe's more at the line. Pressure situations, and uh, you have to make your foul. Now comes the bonus shot for Moore. Moore hits a pair of them. Pressure pack, 65 to 62. Now the Panthers get some pressure in the backcourt. They want to make them use up as much time as possible. Here's Olinger lost control of the ball and then picks it up and gives it back to Gissendanner. And again to Olinger. He shoots long for the left. This is Greg Nance. Caps the ball to Greg Jones. Lead pass to Diego McCoy. McCoy goes under, grab by the shoulder, and thrown down at the end of the court. McCoy going under with the clear chance to score it. But I think what Dave will see come up, what Dave Olinger wanted to do. Here's the shot by Olinger. Tip out Nance. 
breakaway uh, down the floor, pass to McCoy as he goes in. Allinger does reach, wants to prevent him, but he holds on to him at the same time, Jack, as they go down. I don't think anything intentional there pushing him down. No, nothing was said about intention, but he grabbed no. him by the shoulder. Yeah. That's the fourth foul on Olinger. So at the line will be Diego McCoy. He's two for four at the free throw line. Freshman from Washington, D.C. Hits that one. McCoy now with 11 points in the ball game. 66-62, and we have 44 seconds to go. That one misfires. Sherman goes after it, but it's picked off by Sammy Ellis. Well, now it's on the even numbers. Here comes Pitt on the attack. Neverson. Ellis. Taken out of the air by West Virginia. Well, Moore took the long pass to the open man, and McCoy, not able to handle it, used a volleyball tap trying to get it to a teammate, and it went out of bounds. I think that's about all he could do in that situation. He knew he was going by the basket, his momentum carrying him by. Clock, clock turning against the Panthers, 22 seconds. They're down by four. Sherman outside, down to 19. Grevy at the baseline. Loses the ball. We got a foul call. I guess Greg Nance. There are two 24s out there, uh, and Carlton Everson was looking as if the foul was on him. Nance started walking towards the West Virginia foul line, and the official uh, brought him back. Neverson going to the line for the first time. He had one field goal in the first half, has responded with six since the intermission. Their second leading score at Pitt, 13.1 average, 76.1% free throw shooter. So Neverson is a solid free throw shooter for the Panthers. Neverson hits, and the score is 66 to 63. Carlton Neverson. Well, if he hits this one, Collins jumps out of bounds with the ball, can't get it in, Jack. Oh, probably Mountaineers are called timeout. Neverson on a pair of them, and Pitt immediately picks them up at the dressing room door. Here is Jones dribbling with the ball, gets it down to Ford and Nance, Nance to Diego McCoy. McCoy to Collins. Collins trying to get it down in the hole, and we get a foul. Collins got rid of the ball going for Nance, but it was deflected. The foul came on the pass. That was the second one on Darrell Gissendatter. The clock shows four seconds remaining. West Virginia leading by two. Uh, there's, they see the ball come down from McCoy right in, and he wants to make his pass, but intentional foul there by Gissendatter. Collins have two. Now West Virginia's pulled completely out with four seconds left. They'll let, uh, no matter what the situation now, they'll let Pitt go on down. Collins hits, the score is 67 to 64. Collins again, 68-64. Four seconds to go. Now they're gonna let Pitt come in, take the shot. And the shot is taken on the buzzer by Sammy Ellis. Ellis hits it. But it is a little bit too little too late as the Panthers made a tremendous comeback in the ball game, but fell short by two. It's all over at the Coliseum in Morgantown. West Virginia defeats the Pitt Panthers 68 to 66. We'll be right back. Rutgers Scarlet Knights is Kelvin Troy, number 54, team's leading scorer and leading rebounder. The center is Big Roy Henson, 6'9", a freshman, 